boner problems, premature ejaculation problems, and like getting their girl off problems. Sterling Cooper, world-renowned sex expert who's here to teach you how to attract more girls, improve your skills in the bedroom, reignite the spark in your relationship, and anticipate cheating before it even happens. After watching this episode, you'll have the best sex of your life. It's important for a man to at least be seen as being attractive to other women in some way to make sure his woman knows okay i picked a good horse my friends come to me and like i'm not having any sex with my partner what's the reason for that just taking her like on a whim randomly passionately that's kind of spontaneity is what can re-inject that passion back into the sex life of, of an otherwise dull relationship i have no problem getting and maintaining an erection but sometimes i can just slide in and it's like oh god i can tell that i've got two <laughs> minutes how do i overcome that can you um identify signs that someone's cheating on you uh, before it's actually happened Ooh. Can monogamy work in this day and age? I can have someone else by tomorrow because I can just swipe 100 times and one of them's going to date me. So once I have kids, I'm going to stop making girls call me daddy. <laughs> like, instantly. It sounds crazy to me that you go home and it's like, I've had a hard day at work. So can you tell me about this? I've got a small <laughs> Like, I just don't, <laughs> I don't get that. <laughs> Welcome to the podcast. Pleasure to have you. Thank you for having me, lads. So let's start off with a hard question. Why should people listen to you? Well, that's not a hard question to answer. Um, why should people listen to me, especially about sex advice, is I'm the only guy on the internet right now talking about this stuff with my level of like performing under pressure experience across the adult industry in a couple of different contexts, uh, like being porn and escorting, and then prior to that, swinger scene, and then prior to that, like what you might have called the POA scene all back in the day. Mm. So I've pulled all this like really obscure experience of getting the deed done, but with a lot of pressure behind you. And yeah, I'm the only guy who's out here teaching that. Do you think people are more open to talking about sex nowadays? Is it becoming um, less taboo? A hundred percent. Like, like society has become way more sexual in general because you look at like music videos now, they would have been considered pornography when I was a kid. Mm. Pretty so much. true. Yeah. So everything's a lot more sexualized. And, but even then, like guys don't really talk about sexual problems with each other. Like, you're not, you guys aren't going to sit down and, t and tell each other, hey, man, my dick ain't working. Yeah. There's, <laughs> it, there's, it ain't going to happen. There's still a stigma. I mean, we were obviously talking about this podcast last night and even sitting there, tr even bringing up the conversation of sex, it did leave us all with a bit of a feeling of like, oh, this is a bit strange that we we're just three lads sitting around this table discussing it, you know? Co correct. Yeah. So I try to give guys like uh, just a resource they can go to because I, I look at myself as like the big brother that I never had, where it's like, Yo, man, like, what? How do I do this with the chick? How do I do that with the chick? Why? Why does this work? Why does this not work? And it's I'm just this resource that the average guy can kind of go to, and I'm I'm very upfront. I'm very honest. I'm I'm very straightforward with the advice I try to give guys. And I'm not trying to put like you know a big bravado show on and put an ego attached to it because otherwise guys can't really relate to it, and they feel like they can't you know, turn to a guy like me for advice. Right guys, today we've got the perfect sponsor for this episode and I'm really excited to talk about them. Manscaped are the best in the game when it comes to male grooming and have you more than covered with their new performance package, the 5.0 Ultra, featuring the lawnmower 5.0. I mean, is this a supercar or a shaver? I'll tell you what though, this is truly the next generation trimmer with interchangeable blade heads for whatever shave you desire. I'll be honest, as a man, I used to think grooming was a complete waste of time and something better left to women. But since I started using Manscaped's tools, I feel amazing and my girlfriend can't get enough of me. The performance package also comes with the Weed Whacker Ear and Nose Trimmer with skin safe technology, the Crop Suver Ball Lotion, as well as the Crop Preserver anti chafing Deodorant. Yeah, it's basically a ball deodorant. So what are you waiting for? Level up your grooming game today with a 20% discount and free shipping at manscaped.com with the code STRIKEITBIG or the link in the description. Do you think a large proportion of men are struggling in some way or do have unanswered questions about sex? There's definitely a, a big problem with younger guys around pornography use. Massive problem that leads to a lot of knock-on problems. And like, I hear this from both men and women. Like I'll hear it from straight from the horse's mouth with dudes saying, yo bro, like how do I quit porn? How like I'm having these problems in my bedroom. I'm watching too much pornography. That's the first thing dudes should cut out by the way. I always say that. And then I hear it from women saying like, 
my guy isn't into me anymore or like he can't get it up or all these things and it's so you get i'm getting it from both angles like young guys are having trouble so let's unpack that a little bit so as a porn star why is porn bad if we talk about just biochemically like consuming endless amounts of porn is screwing with your dopamine receptors like the novelty response you're supposed to get from seeing a beautiful woman it should like you shouldn't be getting like a a it shouldn't need endless amounts of internet pornography to us to achieve like an erection it's just an average naked woman in front of you should get you raging when when we were when i was a kid it was like if you saw an ankle in like geography class like you're hitting the desk you know yeah. it's that's the way we're meant to be as men like think of the average guy today has seen more boobs than genghis khan ever did yeah, I remember. That's ridiculous. I remember at school when someone brought in a Nux magazine and everyone's like, look at it. Oh, look at the boobs. Look at this. But now you just see that online. It's, it's accessible to everyone, even yeah. obviously younger, younger people. I think the, I think the average age a, a young man is seeing his like first pornographic material is something like 10, 11, 12. Mm. And it's on a mobile phone. It's been shown to him by someone else at school. And that's a big problem. It's like a, it's this, we've let this like Pandora's box open and we've got no idea what's going to happen. We like we could be looking at like you know a childless generation mm. in not that not that long in the future. I absolutely contributed to the problem with my previous career, and I got out of it. And I was like, I started. I didn't really understand how bad it was when I was in it. To be fair, I was doing it for selfish reasons. I was getting my rocks off, getting paid to do that. I'm like, it was fun. But then I get out of it, and I start talking to guys, and they're having all these problems. And I'm like, oh crap. Like, this is bad. Like, we've really screwed up dudes here. So most of the problems relate to the fact that men or women as well aren't stimulated as much as they should be in the bedroom because they're, they're, they've seen it all before and they've seen an extreme version of it before that they're just not that interested. In a, in a way, the parallel for women is actually kind of Instagram. The, so the same way that a woman can go onto Instagram and see, like, all these dudes with really flexy lifestyles. Mm. But, you know, Joe the plumber down the street isn't doing that so he isn't stimulating to her anymore she ain't even considering dating him or wifing him up and so it that's the, the female equivalent but the male equivalent is pornography and i guess women are getting the attention from instagram as well and attention is what they seek versus you know the men want want sex yeah. so if they're getting their attention needs fulfilled and men are getting their sexual needs fulfilled that's maybe why we're facing all these sexual uh, sexless relationships like we're it's it's a it's a generation of people who are being very anti-social mm. you don't need to be social in 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 this sense like in a real face-to-face -face sense the need for that is disappearing I mean, I'm I'm guilty of that. I meet women through my Instagram account all the time, and it's it's that's odd. That's kind of odd when you think about it. Like we don't really know each other. We 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 see like the doctored version of of each other's lifestyles, perhaps through an Instagram feed, but we don't really get to know each other in the sense that you would know someone if you like grew up in the same town as them. Yeah, I've definitely got people that I follow and they follow me. We might have met once or twice. But I feel like they're almost a friend just because you know everything they've done for the last year. But if you actually think about it, have I actually ever had a real, you know, a proper conversation? No. So it's such yeah. a strange uh, concept. We live in weird times. Do you think there's an, any other reasons why so many people are in these sexless re relationships? Because I mean, I know we're talking about, you know, guys don't talk about sex. But the few times I have is when my, my friends come to me and like, I'm not having any sex with my partner. Like, why is, what's the reason for that? Oof. It, there's a, a bunch of reasons that could be so it could be it could be a sex drive thing on his on his part doesn't sound like it from if he's coming to you and he's like she's not you know yeah. keen i mean sometimes it's even like oh yeah we just don't do that anymore you know they, they don't even think about it okay well that means the pat like the passion's gone from both of them right mm -hmm. and this can start there's two ways this can come about one it could be that the guy is really just taking it for granted because a guy has to work like being a man is about working in all aspects like you can't it's it, it kind of sucks but that's the reality of the world you live in like you, you can choose to live in reality or not but being a man is about like constantly trying to work and tr constantly trying to improve every aspect of your life right and putting effort into every aspect of your life otherwise it's gonna fall by the wayside right and a relationship is just the same and the sex the sexual chemistry in the relationship is just the same so if he's not inspiring that passion in his woman well, that's the start. He's starting to take it for granted. Starting to be maybe he's just falling into habits and routine. And habits and routine, like a, a habitual sex life, is the most unattractive, uninspiring thing. 
it becomes complacent. It becomes boring for the woman. Like even something as really, really as simple as just passionately taking your woman in the kitchen when she's like cooking or something. She just obviously consensually. I hate that I have to say that on like the internet because it, to me it's like obvious. Yeah. But we have to say that. Like, but just taking her like on a whim, randomly, passionately, that's kind of spontaneity is what can re-inject that passion back into the sex life of, of an otherwise dull relationship. And But the guy has to be the one to kind of take the initiative there to inspire that back out of his woman again. What about if someone um, has kids, you know, and they can't just do that spontaneous sex? Yeah, but you know, it's a lot yeah, tougher. And uh, people have said before that you need to schedule in your sex, you know, on Thursday, that sex day or whatever. But it sounds like that's the opposite of what you should oh, I was going to say, because it's interesting. We just had a top celebrity psychologist mm. on, Marissa Peer, and she was saying that most people's sex drive dying is down to the predictability. Big she up. says that she has clients where the man will walk in on a Saturday before they go shopping and he has no pants on and his T-shirt on or some, something ridiculous like that. And every time he's, he does that, pocket. yeah, every time he does that, the woman knows that he wants sex. And he's like, oh God, you know, I've got to do this again. Like, there's no excitement. It's just that same old. Play shit. the same tape again. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, well, that that to, in her like perspective, that that is kind of like um, obligatory. Yeah. Mm. The sex isn't inspired. It's like a chore. Yeah. When he when it's scheduled like that, and it, it's not only boring, but it's also like becomes obligatory, and, and it takes away all the passion and all the fun of it all. And that's why I mean, yeah, it's harder to do if you're if you've got kids around the house and stuff, but you can still pull it off. And I, I think that scheduling a date night is, although it's good intentioned, mm. it has the wrong effect because it takes away the, the mystery, takes away the excitement, makes it predictable. Like he should be scheduling some shit in the background without letting it know. Like, okay, like, look, just schedule Friday night off, maybe, or schedule Thursday night off. And he's going to he's gonna do something spontaneous. She doesn't know, take her on a, on a mini adventure. It doesn't matter what it is. But the, just the fact that it's mysterious and she doesn't, it's unpredictable is good enough doesn't have to be outlandish and crazy it's just women need that that little bit of mystery here and there to keep the passion around is this a conversation that couples should have though should the man or the woman you know say to their partner i'm not enjoying sex we're not having enough sex or does that conversation in itself almost kill the mood by putting the elephant in the room should you just you know work behind the scenes to make sure that it's improving yourself i think you both would know that it's not you're both fully aware that you're not having good sex you're both fully aware you're not having enough sex yeah like it's it's it is the elephant in the room you already know it yeah and i think okay well it's the man's job to do something about it because in my opinion the man is the leader of the relationship he's the leader of the household so okay well do you do you are you going to defer that problem onto her and it's going to make it worse you know so I, that's my approach to it is to teach guys how to be more of a passionate, more of a dominant lover with their woman so that it can inspire that out of her again. Because you think about, I remember like, this is a weird thing to talk about, but I remember my mother used to read all these Mills and Boone novels. Yeah, my, you know, my mum reads those. I don't yeah, know what that is. Like super, <laughs> she might want me cutting that out. but <laughs> old, old school romantic yeah. novels, mm. right? And I remember picking one up one day because I, I used to see my mum just read these all day. And I'm like, what is this thing she's reading? This, it's got Fabio on the cover or something. Some dude who looks like a pirate. And I'm like reading up. This is the, this is the most trashy, erotic thing I've ever mm. seen in my life. And it's like housewives read that stuff. Or at least they used to. I don't know what they're doing now, but they, they yeah. definitely did. I mean, did. 50 Shades of Grey went huge, didn't it? Right. Which is a similar kind of thing. But it's because they're looking for that that, that kind of passion, that, that adventure, that mystery, mm. that unpredictability in their life. And it's you can get that from a man you've, like a, per, a partner you've been with for decades. You can still get it. It's just about trying to stop yourself from falling into that routine. Mm. And especially as a guy, that's, that's one of the hardest things is to not fall into the routine. Because we get in a rhythm, we like... We like doing this position, that position, and we have great time. Got our rocks off, game over. But if you just, you got to switch it up a bit every now and then. Throw a spanner into works every now and then. So not you, all the, maybe you don't have to do it all the time, but every now and then you mix it up just to keep it fresh. Keep yeah, keep add it a bit of spice in. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So if you had to lay out an action plan on how to do that, what would you say? Depends what you're, you're kind of into. Asking for a friend, yeah. Yeah, asking, asking for a mate. Yeah, <laughs> gets his notebook out. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, I'll give you I'll give you one one practical example that I personally love to do, and it's um, uh, I I'm a big fan of the remote control vibrator. So like you get, either have like a Wii Vibe app on your phone, or you can do you have a little controller, and you just hand it just random date like don't do it every week, don't do it you know throw it out every now and then randomly. 
all right, we're going on, a, we're going on for a drinks, so we're going for for dinner, whatever. Put this in. <laughs> cool. And then when 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 a waitress comes over, we turn it on, see if she can place her order without losing concentration. We play, we just make it into this fun little game between me and her, where it's like it's almost like a conspiracy, mm. right? It's like we know something naughty's happening. No one else knows something naughty's happening. That makes it even more exciting. Like the aspect, the prospect of getting caught is a really, really stimulating thing for women. That's why women tend to really enjoy like public sex and things like that, where it can be a bit more risque. So I think that's a very, very safe way of introducing that random element into it and that excitement into a relationship. Because it's just the two of you. It's private. Like... It adds the excitement, adds the mystery, adds the unpredictability. She's going to say something. If you've never done it before, she's going to be like, you're crazy, which is always good. Is, there, so, is there a chance that she goes, no, mate, I don't, <laughs> I don't fancy that. I mean, there's, a, there's, there's obviously a chance for that, but I think, I, I think bringing up the, I think bringing up the idea to, I mean, and doing it confidently and, you know, with a pair of balls is like, yeah, I want you to put this in tonight. Presumably there's got to be a point of no return. Let's say someone's been married for 30 years and they've got kids and a lot of couples are arguably slightly repulsed by each other. They, they, re they really, they're together, but they really, there's no sexual attraction. And if, if you said to her, you know, put this up yourself, um, you know, that she'd probably just be really put off by it. Is there, is there a point where it's just like, look, we've just got to break well, this up now. There's no saving this. Well, if you're both, if you're both sexually repulsed by each other, I would suggest you both get in the gym. Right. Obviously. If you're both, I mean, this you, you can be like 50 60 70 and still good looking if you as a, especially as a dude and a woman if you just take care of your body so like if you're getting if you're getting that long into a relationship and you find like the physical attraction is waning well one of you needs to hit the gym to inspire the other one to hit the gym because the first one, whoever whoever gets fit first if you have two like overweight people right and whichever one gets fit first is going to start getting more attention from the opposite sex and that is going to kick the fire up the other one's ass Jealousy works. Jealousy really, really works. And that's, I think that's a, that's another thing we should talk about is it's important, I think, for a man to not necessarily, not to necessarily like cheat or step around or, or like flirt or like do anything with other women, but to at least be seen as being attractive to other women in some way to make sure his woman knows, okay, I picked a good horse. I backed a good horse here. This is, this is a good, I, I picked the right one. I didn't pick a bum. Because like, okay, he can be a bit flirty with other women here and there. Just that little, little bit of jealousy every now and then in a woman is actually a good thing. Because yeah, it, no, it reinforces sense. her attraction for a man. How about in the same instance, for, but for a woman? I don't think that, I actually, I think jealousy works against men. Right. Right. Like when, because when a woman is being, is, is like getting lots of attention from other men, if she's indulging in it it kind of indicates a bit of disrespect towards her husband. Or her, but or but her what if she's just not, she's not having any of it, you know, she's not even talking to oh, these well, guys, but then, you can see that being, she's getting lots of Well, then she's being attention. very respectful. Mm. Um, and obviously she, if she's a beautiful woman, she's going to get attention. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So like, it's, that's kind of like by default, a beautiful woman will get attention from a bunch of other dudes anyway. Mm. You so know? you just got to work whether, a little bit or not, harder like, as a man. It's whether or not she like engages mm. with it at all, will gauge like her level of respect for her man. That but uh the guy kind of has to be a bit more proactive with it because mm. guy like most guys don't really get attention from women unless they proactively go out and do something about it so you kind of have to engineer scenarios in which she can she can see that you are you you still got it yeah a woman needs an emotional roller coaster yeah exactly because you were if you were mr nice like super happy fun all the time like it's it's just it's like it's like a roller coaster that just goes up yeah it's boring yeah it's it's the it's the down going into the up and the up going into the down that's the fun part of roller coaster right so women need the up as much as they need the down but but they don't always think they do of course they might no. think this is a horrible thing but unconsciously it's there's a, there's an excitement there of like why is this happening to me you know well why why does why does why do women tend to women will uh, um as a bit of a trope women will say all oh, men are cheaters well, no no honey you keep dating guys yeah. who cheat for a reason because you're attracted to it like you might not consciously be aware of why but you keep picking the same kind of guys again and again and again which tells me a lot about you about you and what you're attracted to right it tells me that you need that that really kind of intense down of like oh god he, he slept with another chick in order to kind of try and maintain something with a guy it's if it's a pattern it's a pattern you know Look at like the, what's the common denominator here? If you're if you're with like the chicks with about three or four different boyfriends and they all cheated on her, 
what's the common denominator? The common denominator is you pick guys who cheat or who are very likely to cheat. It's kind of sad in a way though, isn't it? That you have to understand that and almost not cheat, but you have to, there's a game a you game, have to yeah. play or is there, is it just a case of finding a woman who's secure enough in herself that doesn't need that perhaps? Well, I, that would be the ideal scenario. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I, I don't like playing games. I'd much rather not play, I'd much rather work than, yeah. than worry about playing games. And, and you know, I like, I like a peaceful woman who doesn't give me any drama. So you can select for that from the, from the start and that, that will save you a lot of headache. <laughs> So if, if you're running your own business or you've got a nine to five job and you just don't have any time to keep it interesting, how can you keep it interesting? Do you need to go out on your own with your mates and, and get that attention from other girls? And how's that possible? I think if you're super, super busy with work mm. and un unless you're like stuck in the same house with her all the time and so she's just, a, mm. you're both around each other all the time, that's not an ideal. Then you need to manufacture time apart because like comfort, like uh, sorry, absence makes the heart grow fonder. It's, it's that, it just ties into the idea of like, you know, being habitual and being like routine. Like when, okay, for, for example, I've got a friend who, his, his woman is absolutely head over heels in love with him. And he's, he's traveling all the time. Like, but when he's home, he's with her, 100%, 100% with her, like adoring, loving man. But he bounces around the, the country so much. But it's that, it's that absence that allows her to miss him and, and appreciate why she loves him in the first place. And so I think when you, if you're a busy guy, if you don't have time to like proactively inject these kind this this kind of excitement back into the relationship, just absence mm. due to work can I'll do a lot of the legwork for you. As a sets coach, what would you say is the most common things guys ask you? The top three tend to be boner problems, premature ejaculation problems, and like getting their girl off. Problems. Right. So let's attack all three of those. Let's start with uh, boner problems. Boner problems. Yeah. So boner problem. Like we. So we talked about the porn thing before. Yeah. That's that's a big contributing factor to it. Um. The, there's three other key mechanisms that that basically affect your ability to get and maintain a boner. One is clean arteries. So people think of like arterial health and like heart attacks and stuff like that as like blockages around the arteries in your heart. That's true. You do also have arteries in your dick. And you have arteries that feed like the, all the blood that goes into your dick. So when you get calcium deposits in uh, in any, any of those arteries, it's actually it's actually an early if boner problems are actually an early warning sign of underlying cardio, cardiovascular mm -hmm. issues. So it's actually a, if you haven't if you're having them, you should really pay attention to it. So the first thing you want to do is clean out your arteries. <clears throat> There's a few different things that can do that. Vitamin K2, the MK7 variant, very, very good to supplement with that. Actually takes the calcium that's building up in your arteries and puts it in your bones where it's actually useful. So that's the first thing. Second thing is your nitric oxide production. So nitric oxide is what causes our muscles to like relax and dilate and engorge with blood. Like when you get a pump in the gym, that's nitric oxide's doing that. Same thing happens when you get a boner, right? The boner is actually a relaxation response technically because it's the, flat, the vessels are not constricting, they're relaxing and filling up and engorging with blood. So when you you either you don't have enough nitric oxide being produced in your body or you don't have enough of the prerequisites for your body to even make nitric oxide in the first place which is nitrates you need nitrates in your diet to produce in the first place and you need things like l-arginine l-citrulline in your diet to optimally produce nitric oxide the third thing is a thing called the venous system so if you've ever ever seen someone with varicose veins yeah where like it's the kind of like you get those spidery veins that pull on the surface that's from a thing called venous leakage and venous leakage is basically you kind of have these like flaps in your your arteries right think of it this way they kind of like lock the blood from going in one direction only so when these valves and these locks kind of stop working properly you get blood freely going in any direction and it sits there and pulls at the mm -hmm. surface that's where you get a varicose vein same thing can happen in your dick so a great way of telling this if certain sex positions you can't maintain an erection it's a venous leakage problem. If, if for example, like when you're laying on your back, you can't keep it up as strong as you could if you're doing, like if you're on top, clear cut sign of venous leakage, clear cut sign. And you can fix that with a thing called horse chestnut extract that's actually used to treat varicose veins, but you also use it to treat venous leakage in the, in the penis. So there's a bunch of stuff here that you can use to completely fix. Uh, and and how do you take that? Is it, is it like a pill or is it? All, all of these are supplements, yes. Right. Um, I actually, I am, I actually have put together a supplement myself that is. I've been working a year on this problem. That's why. That's why I know all the signers. Mm -hmm. I've been diving into this thing for like a year, and I've actually just we're launching it like next week. 
this uh, like a brand new supplement just specifically targeted this because I used to take all this stuff before a scene because I was like I'd sit there and pick the brains of every other like veteran porn star I ever met I'm like what do you supplement with what do you supplement with what do you supplement with and then I I used to always, I used to, used to be a chemist as well so I have like a science background so I'm like okay well where's what's the science behind what he's taken and where's like the overlapping commonalities here and I'm like all right that's the thing that's the thing that's the thing I'm slamming these pills before I go to set every day I had a pretty successful career, so it worked. <laughs> so are most people in the adult industry taking supplements? That's very common. The hundred percent take the dudes are hundred percent taking supplements, yeah. They will you will, they will use like the little blue pill for like very extreme scenes. Like don't you want to be too crass on your podcast, but like let's just say a room full of dudes and like one chick. Bit of a tougher scene to pull off. You you need a bit of sometimes you need a bit of like artificial assistance. That's when you're gonna you save the little blue pills for that stuff. But for the most part, the dudes in the industry are extremely healthy, extremely fit guys always like always working out doing some kind of combat sports or competitive sports super super common like that high, high testosterone kind of environment super common supplementation very very common yeah lots of like a very healthy lifestyle in general what do they actually um inject into their dick sometimes i heard oh. stories about them doing that and, and right. robo dicks and the robo like that. god that's, yeah. two, that's two different two different things. Things. that's two different okay. things so the so the the the, the scariest goddamn thing in the industry is the, is the thing called cavaject right so it's a needle yeah yeah exactly <laughs> they inject it into the, like into the shaft oh. mm. and this chemical basically forces like a two-hour erection forces it mm. like it won't go down and there's dudes have been taken to the hospital had to get catheters in their dick oh. horrifying it shit. does sound horrible. horrifying it actually makes me all like <laughs> but you know the reason the reason they turn to that the whole reason yeah. they turn to that in the first place is because they kept taking the little blue pill every other day like or every week they kept taking that little blue pill so often it stopped working and it will stop working it's like a it, it's a drug resistance problem you if you take because it's, it's not a natural substance it's a pharmaceutical drug your body will develop a resistance to it if you just continually take it and so these dudes were like there's, a, there's some veterans who were taking that for too long they had to get the had to start taking the injection i know i know who these guys are and then that the needle the dick needle stops working yeah and then they have to get the robo dick and the robo dick's even more terrifying they basically like take your, your wang hollow out the middle and replace it with like a pump that you could just look like those old nike pump i don't know if you guys might be too young for that damn it like, just, yeah, just, yeah just, no just idea what you're just, about. just an air pump like an air pump you just yeah. like, and like so do they still get the same feeling when they're having sex apparently they do Oh, really? Apparently, like the outside nerve endings aren't screwed with, but like the internal circuitry is literally like a pump. Imagine that preparation, though. Hold on a minute, darling. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it kind of ruins the mood a little bit. I guess if you, if it's for work, it's a bit different. But Jesus, wow, <laughs> that is mental. I hate it's to madness, ask this. Madness. I hate to ask this question because um, someone in the comments said the other day, and I actually agree. They said these boys are obsessed with testosterone, which isn't true. Um, <laughs> Not these just, boys. No, this guy. Obsessed, it's just, no actually, saying? it said these boys are obsessed with testosterone, but it just comes up in conversation <laughs> naturally on these podcasts. But where does testosterone, testosterone come into that? You know, getting and maintaining an erection because is that just the sex drive, and then the erection comes from something different, or does high testosterone and that correlate? So the testosterone is purely sex drive related, right? Yeah. So like all the like the erection problems are, are down to those three, those really mainly those three mechanisms, biological mechanisms we just talked about. But sex having a higher sex drive will allow you to like get that psychological stimulation that creates an erection in the first place way, way, way easier. But if you you can still have a high sex drive and have terrible cardiovascular health, and you ain't getting a boner. Mm, right. See, that's interesting because I I would have thought that the high testosterone would help you get the erection, but obviously like it, that's it not help, the case. It help, it'll help to spark it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. an erection is like it starts here in the brain. Yeah. It's like it's a psychological kind of stimulus, which then causes a physiological response, aka like the the blood flow and stuff, right? So the the high test causes like the increased sex drive, hundred percent, hundred percent. So it's it's kind of like the ignition switch. But right. you can have high tests and also problems getting a, getting a boner. Because you don't have that side Because I things. don't know if you know this, but I've got a 26. Oh, I, I thought you weren't going to mention it this episode. <laughs> <laughs> so what was the, the second most common um, question? Uh, premature ejaculation is a very common one. This tends okay. to be, this, this tends to come in two different camps. Like it's either older dudes or younger guys who are very, very inexperienced. Mm. Um, so premature ejaculation is really about balancing the pelvic floor correctly and like conditioning your body correctly so like 
this and this ties into the porn thing. A lot, a lot of dudes, what they do is they they'll they jump online, they look at some porn, and they fap off like it's a speed race. Mm. Like bang, they're trying to get the nut off as quickly as they possibly can. That's true. I've never made it to the climax when watching porn ever. Right. Literally never. What the climax and the actual? Yeah, porn I'll just scene. watch the porn video for like four or five minutes yeah. and I'm done. You Bang. know what I mean? I'm not watching <laughs> 25 minutes and all of that. Shit. <laughs> skip it to the. Yeah, I'll just skip, skip it. Skip the intro. All get... the acting that I spent <laughs> hours. That was the best bit. <laughs> no, <laughs> Thank you. We did do a little bit of research. I have to say for this podcast, he's like, "Oh, skip to the action part." <laughs> I was very proud of my acting when I was working. Thank yeah, you very I didn't much. See it. So that's what makes every porn star cry when you just skip that those first five minutes. The, the, the ironic thing is we probably we probably spend like two thirds of the day on the five minutes that you skip through. Oh, that's really? the weirdest part. Do you have a script? Are you rehearsing your lines? <laughs> yeah, we have a script. Yeah, yeah. Um, we we legit have a script and every we've got camera set up like this. Like we've got everything. So the, are the d directors taking it seriously like they would? A, oh a yeah, normal film. Yeah, yeah. The, the directors are are actually all classically film school trained. Really, they're actually amazing at what they do. <laughs> But they, and they're from LA. So do they do this on the side or is it their main thing? It's their main thing because they okay. couldn't get work in Hollywood. Mm. It's all these film school grads who couldn't get work in Hollywood. And they're like, well, where's, where's, the, paying, where's the best paying job? Oh, over here. Mm -hmm. And they still apply like the same level of like professionalism and time and effort to like all the lighting, all the detail, all the little details just to like those five minutes that you skip through every time. Yeah, I think people can, would probably find it interesting. Like as a five minute sort of summary, how does porn work? Like from sort of start to getting paid. Like a day, yeah. In sort of five minutes. Yeah, okay. Um, I rock up an hour after the girl rocked up. So my call time was usually like 10 a.m. She's getting there at like 9 a.m., let's say that. Um, she's in a makeup chair. I say hi. Say hi to the director. Get my paperwork. I fill out like tax forms. I fill out model consent forms. Uh, I fill out... Then, then we go through like a, a consent checklist, basically. It depends upon what kind of scene it is. And then we go through like the script. I check out like the house we're shooting in. I check out like where we're going to, where the sex is going to happen, where the, where the intro is going to happen. I talk with the director, like, okay, like what sh what shot, what sequence do we want to shoot this stuff in? Uh, I talk with the, my co-star. I'm like, okay, what, what, am, what do you do your do's and don'ts sexually and verbally? We go through that stuff. So I'm making sure I'm not pissing her off halfway through a scene by saying something that she doesn't want to be called. For example, some women are very, very like some women love being called a bitch. Some women hate it. Some women like being called a slut. Some women hate it. So you've got to be very, very, very careful with that kind of stuff in this professional context. So do you have a system with uh, you go through every single word that you might use or you, is it you, not you, that comprehensive? I, you generally just say like, okay, what, what you just go for the nose. What yeah. don't you like done having done to you? What do you like having done to you? What don't you like someone to call you? What do you like someone to call you? Mm. That's a, it's really simple like that. I don't have to go through like everything, yeah. but t typically they'll give you like, yeah, don't do that. The weirdest one I ever had was a girl was, the girl said, don't touch my earlobe. That was the weirdest <laughs> one I ever had. Yeah. Did don't, she give you a reason for that? Or was nope, it just a bit of an you don't think to question it? I wasn't going to question it. Was she a bit of a diva that one or was she all right? A <laughs> little bit, a yeah. little bit. I didn't, yeah. I don't want to know the backstory behind that personally. I just let that one slide. Mm. Uh, so that happens and we, yeah, then we get stuck into like the film. She, her makeup's done. We get stuck into the filming of uh, like the, all the intro stuff. Like I said, that takes probably two thirds of the day, like the acting and the dialogue stuff. And then, then we get down to like the, the nitty gritty stuff. And that's like probably a good, at least a good 90-ish minutes. And it go, we do photos first. So we kind of like map out what we're going to do on camera. Then we get dressed again and film it. And that 90 minutes of, of action, what's that then put into? Is that a 10 minute? That 90 video? minutes of action is basically like, probably like 20 minutes taking photos and then redressing and then like at least 45 minutes of so, so it stays in or is there like cuts? Like, oh, let's, there's, there's let's have cuts. a rest. There's let's... always cuts, there's always right. cuts. Um, yeah, it's either, it's either rest, changing the battery, like the, oh, the light fell over, like something something's off with the set. Um, like she's she's cramped up or something like whatever like she needs a break or i need a break whatever it is like that's yeah it's, it's very rarely the ideal day is like 30 minutes 30 minutes no cuts were great sure. we're running out so there's a lot of structure to this process obviously yeah. and it is it's a job it's work right so how does that affect your actual sex life it's my sex life out after the industry is infinitely better than it ever was what about while in it it was fun um you got to do like all kinds of crazy cool shit that you never, I would never have thought of doing in my regular life. But uh, it, it got a bit boring after a while having someone else tell you how to have sex. Mm. Did it put off regular girls though that weren't in the industry when you were just dating? Not at all. Really? Not at all. Even to the to this day, it doesn't like. I mean, I, I retired like a while ago, but they don't. 
don't have any problem with it. I've spoken to a lot of um, OnlyFans models, don't ask why, but, um, and a lot of the times what they've said is that because they've almost become, it's like watching so much porn, right? You kind of get used to it. And because sex for them just becomes an activity, it's like going to the gym, that then when they try and have meaningful connections in the bedroom with their partners, some of them have boyfriends, they say that they they don't they can't really get that because to them it just feels like oh I've just come home from work or I've just been doing this all day it's it doesn't turn me on anymore. Yep. You never felt that? I would say that I it taught me to enjoy like regular sex like missionary position 5 minutes like nothing special like kissing and cuddling sex way way more but became way more enjoyable than all the freaky shit way more enjoyable for me as a guy personally because it was just no one's telling me what to do i can i can i can nut whenever i want i can do whatever i want like and we're both having a good time and it's it's a lot more personal and intimate so it actually made that way better and presumably some of the the freaky stuff is not necessarily what feels good it's just what looks good 100 100 percent. it's just it's all uncomfortable it's not like it's not really enjoyable that much that, that's why it's a, it's why it's work it's like you gotta you gotta keep that 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 guy going the whole time what what are some of the freaky shit that you did actually take into your um your day to day life? Uh, a lot of the, a lot of the BDSM stuff, right? Okay. A lot of that. I used to, I, I dabbled a little bit with like rope bondage and stuff before, but then I I started working for Kink dot com, which is one mm. of the, like the the biggest BDSM site on the planet, mm. and like I learned a whole ton of like tricks from working with those guys. So what do you think guys should be doing? They should be tying up their girl and getting I mean, a whip or something. I mean, not <laughs> if you if you're into that, like, a lot of women really enjoy like mm. bondage. But like, and because bondage is this interesting thing. It's like it's it's slow. It's like a tease in and of itself. You don't have to get all. You don't have to be hanging a girl from the shut like the, the rafters. You don't have to go all crazy. Something as simple as like a two column bind, like binding your hands together. Something as simple as that. And that's actually a very versatile one. You can bind the same thing you can use to to tie two hands together. You can tie two legs together. You can tie a hand and a leg together. Like it's very versatile. But even like I remember the first time I ever did this. This is when I was in my mid twenties. I had a girlfriend at the time, and I was like, I want to learn how to do a bit of rope bondage. And I literally had my laptop out watching a YouTube tutorial as I was practicing this on her. <laughs> Dripping wet the whole time. Just because she'd never done it before. And it was it was literally just like, hang on, rewind, stop, start, rewind. <laughs> do that bit again. The most dorkiest thing you could possibly imagine. But she still thoroughly got off to it. And I, and I learned a new skill in the process. But a, a big part of the white reason it's erotic is because it's, it's just so slow and sensual. And it's also like like kind of domination and control in a way, like restricting her movement. And it's obviously done consensually and safely. That's a, that's why I did a tutorial, because I wanted to learn how to do it without hurting anybody. Right? Could you just not have watched the video beforehand? <laughs> yeah, I could, I, yeah, but... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, then I'm like trying to remember everything. I never did Boy Scouts, man. I don't know my knots. Yeah, that's so funny. So if we bring it back to those common questions, we're on uh, premature ejaculation. How can a guy fix that problem? Yeah, so we talked about like conditioning is a big one. So we said, like, if, if you find that you are like unable to control yourself really, really quickly, or well, there's a couple of things there. Are you like super super anxious about sex actually erectile dysfunction problem like i would say performance anxiety problems as in having a problem with your boner because of nerves and premature ejaculation are actually very very commonly intertwined very common because it's a nervous problem a lot of the times with premature ejaculation but you it can also be a problem of an unbalanced pelvic floor so like a weak pelvic floor and it can also be a problem of like you've conditioned your body to respond to sexual stimulus by ejaculating immediately by like busting it up really, really quickly every time you, you watch porn. It doesn't happen to everybody. But so, so does it help it if work. you just like have a wank before and then go into it? I mean, like if, lots if, of guys if, do that. If, if, they could, if they can get it up without any problems, sure. Mm. But like I said, some, sometimes the, if it's a nervous, if the cause of it is nerves, well, you've probably shot yourself in the foot by doing that. Because now you're not, even, you're not gonna be as excited at all and you're gonna have a performance anxiety problem. So how would someone start to get over that then? There's, there's a couple of ways. One, I'd suggest Kegel exercises to just start strengthening their pelvic floor a bit. Uh, I would, I suggest a thing called like reconditioning. So basically like st st you could call it strategic masturbation. If that's the problem and you're, pro you're like, you bust super quickly anytime you have any sexual stimulus, start to like deliberately prolong a masturbation session and maybe and abstain from actually orgasming. Like if you can do that, like a few times and learn to like teach your body to last 
We had a friend that used to do that, didn't we? Edging. Edging. <laughs> well, it's, it's For a, optimum performance. It's a, it's a conditioning thing. Mm. It's, a, it's purely conditioning. I mean, think about the job I used to do. Like, I'm, I'm basically like edging for like 30 minutes. Okay, let me ask you a selfish question then. So for me, I have no problem getting and maintaining an erection. But sometimes I can just slide in and it's like, oh God, I can tell that I've got two <laughs> minutes. Like, I have to sort of come out, back in, come out, back in. Right. How do I overcome that? <laughs> So I'd say, I'd say, I mean, you already said you, you, you kind of jerk off pretty quickly. So yeah. Try, so try. Obviously, I don't do it often. Enjoy yeah, the scene. If I was going yeah. to. Enjoy yeah, the whole first, first, show. Watch all the acting for a time. Right. <laughs> I'll still skip the acting. Yeah. Then we're going to. <laughs> but ju- here's the way, here's a good way of describing it. Recognize your point of no return. Get a lot more intimate with your point of no return. The point of no return is basically like any more physical stimulation, game over. Mm. It's happening. Right. Get when when you if this is strategic masturbation, right? Watch a porno or whatever, and practice like getting to that point on a return and bringing it back again, and getting there and bringing it back again, like calming down, stopping it, calming it down, stopping it, right? And just get used to that feeling of recognizing when you're getting there, and and also getting used to the feeling of calming down, right? And trying to anchor those two things to like stick sexual stimulus. That is a part of the reconditioning process. Uh, the other thing I would suggest is like balanced pelvic floor exercises. So, like, if you guys know what a Kegel is, like, uh, when yeah. you when you stop the pee coming out, mm. like that, that's kind of ten- when you're peeing. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That, I heard that, girl, girls do it quite a lot. Girls do it as well, yeah. yeah. But that, that's how like that's the easiest way, yeah. easiest way to t- explain to a guy how to do it. Mm. Like, if you're if you're pissing, to so stop pissing mid and you stop it mid flow. Yeah. That's, that's one regular Kegel. So that's like a, a front Kegel. The reverse Kegel is the kind of the opposite of that. If you are peeing and you push the pee out faster that kind of like pushing sensation in a way that's a reverse kegel those are actually going to benefit the correct part of your pelvic floor more because typically if you're ejaculating quickly it's you've got too much tension in your pelvic floor because the the orgasm is like a tension like a pulsating tension response down there in the pelvic floor so if if it's already tense your body's kind of already primed to bust so it's it's got a lot to do with that as well uh yeah, and if it's and if it's if a nervous like or not not necessarily nervous, but like a um, super st- stimulus uh, experience for you, like it's super exciting. Like she's super, she's incredibly physically like attractive, or like like you said, you, maybe you haven't you haven't had sex in a while. You, you still you slip it in, and it's just like, super exciting. Yeah, you got you got to learn to like calm everything. Mm. no i don't know what it is i don't well, it's not a nervous or excitement thing it's just like yeah just sometimes like quite a few times it's like yeah, you just put it in it's like oh it's over i can just i can just tell you you've know, already like, reached that point it's gonna be not quite but you but know like, what i mean it's like oh jesus can you go back into round two again like straight away yeah i never really do that though i don't know right. well that but that's i probably that, could but I've, i don't really that's do something that. else you can okay that's there's a so there's a thing called the refractory period and that's basically dictated by it. That's like the time it takes you to go from round one to round two, right? Mm. The time you need off. Mm. Uh, that's dictated by a, a chemical in your brain called prolactin. So there's a few things you can actually take that will reduce the prolactin in your brain and increase your ability to go straight back into round two again. It also it'll also increase your sex drive as well. Uh, I feel confident I wouldn't need that long if I wanted. Oh, to. there you go. I I, I think that would be the case, but it, I just don't like, really do that. If if you yeah, I mean if you if you're if you're not that concerned about what's if it's if she's happy and well like, all i know yeah is if i'm if i'm drunk then it's like yeah 45 minutes an hour i can go uh, go go uh. but if i'm sober i can't last that long right. and it's like i'll be happy with a six to seven minutes you so know why is I mean? that I'll because be the sensation is numbed from all of yeah the I, I guess that's what it is yeah but yeah. If, if i'm drunk i can go for literally as long as i want to the point where i could even get bored of it probably because i'm going for so long yeah, but it's a, it's a numbing if it's if it's if it's if you get that when you're drunk, it's like a kind of like a numbing of the nerves to a yeah. degree, and it's it's probably also a little bit of like less, slightly less blood flow to. Mm. Yeah. Here's what I've found that might be useful. Right, come on, Tom, give me it. Um, because you're over you're overstimulated, right? So you have to distract yourself. So I always sing a song in my head, and if I get a word wrong, and I can't believe I'm saying this on the internet, but if I get a word wrong in the song, I'll start the song again. So I'm so distracted trying to remember the words. It's a rap, actually. I'm so distracted trying to remember the words that I'm less stimulated by what's going on in the action so I can last longer because I'm not as involved in it. 
Does oh. that hurt how much you enjoy? Sex, yeah, I don't so. enjoy it as much, but she'll enjoy it more. So I, you have to get. I, the I do maths she, she, in my head. She a lot. will. I, I guarantee you that she is. She notices that you're not present. She sees my lips moving, but <laughs> yeah, like, I guarantee. What is he actually rapping out loud? She's like. What is this guy doing? <laughs> I guarantee she notices when yeah, you're when you're maybe if, when you're if she's if she's looking the other way or whatever. Just for just for a two okay, minute, okay. A two so, minute break. So if she's in if she's in doggy, yeah. then you can get it, then you can do that because you can't mm. see him out. Yeah, it's not like for the whole time, but if you're like, okay, I need to get myself together here, I'm it's, I'm getting too excited. You, it just just ways, you know, you can, you Tom, can do the alphabet do, or whatever. Do you think this is one of them episodes where we're gonna watch it back and I'm gonna go, Oh god, why did I say that? And then you're gonna say the same thing. <laughs> yeah, and no, I'm gonna say, let's just keep it in. <laughs> maybe, let's but, just go with it. I, I also think it's it's valuable to keep it in right because yeah. there is a lot of people although they won't admit it that might have that problem that you just said and so it's good that people talk yeah. you know I, mean, not, yeah, I, not I, don't, I don't even necessarily see it as a problem yeah. like, I can get the job done if, yeah, exactly. but if it's just that uh, if I could go for 20 minutes on demand I would probably prefer that but I can still get the job done but just I know I can last longer when what, I'm drunk what so I, I get that sober what I always used to find and I, I actually heard this from a couple of other, other like veteran performers as well is like if, if you can get past like the first five minutes you're probably able to last as long as you want. It's mm. kind of like it's ten. It tends to be those first like three to five minutes. If you're is when you'll lose control. Like if you can if you can break, you can get past that time barrier, then you're pretty much in control. And it, it, one of the things we always used to do in, in in porn was you always do your worst position first. The one you don't enjoy the most, you start with that one. Like like for example, I really enjoy cowgirls, so I'm going to finish with that, right? Mm. But I'm going to start with something else. Just so it's it's less stimulating for me to start off with, and it gives me that five minute window. A retention strategy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You gotta be we gotta be kind of strategic about it. Yeah, got something to look forward to. <laughs> yeah. We also going on what you said. Like I also had a mentor. He used what he used to do was he was a director for me as well. He used to count the tiles on the roof. <laughs> Same thing. Yeah, yeah. that was that was his strategy for like you engage the logical mind because it kind of takes you it takes you out of it. But that's like. I would only recommend doing that in a position where she can't see your face mm. because it, it takes away from her enjoyment when you're not present and actually there with her. It really, really takes away from a woman's enjoyment. I know someone that thinks of their grandma, which is strange. <laughs> Let's not go there. That's what, you run into <laughs> real problems there. You, that, you, know, okay. you know this person as well. I'll tell you after. Um, okay, so what's Do the- Do I know him? Uh, yeah. What's Jesus. The, is, is it- um, Beep that, Dario. <laughs> beep that. Call on out the guy. That was right, yes. Um, <laughs> so what's the third you thing? Said that, it before. What's what's the third thing that men struggle with? Um, we talked about yeah, or basically getting their partner off. So like, okay, like she either I've never made her orgasm at all, or I can't get her to orgasm from penetration, or I can't get her to orgasm from like oral sex or whatever it is. Like I can't get her to squirt. Like any any of the above are, are very very easy. Like these are all mecha mostly mechanical things, super easy to, to teach a guy how to do. But another another super secret like hyper tool that dudes just don't use is dirty talk dirty talk is like taking the fast lane to a woman's orgasm it's the easy the fastest easiest way to get a woman off is just whispering some shit in her ear so what do we whisper because again i, I have another friend um what are, what, are the, what are the lyrics to the song <laughs> <laughs> yeah i accidentally just start rapping in her ear <laughs> Sorry, you what? Can, you can't do both at the same time. <laughs> this uh, is nuts. I, I have another friend who's in, they, they've got a kid together and they're, 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 they're living together. And, and he says that he's tried dirty talk, but she just laughs because she, she just finds it funny, right? And it kind of kills the mood. So how do you navigate dirty talk? Okay. What, what are the things you do say? And, and you want to be taken seriously, obviously, whilst doing that. Yeah, okay. that's a very good point. A lot of guys are afraid of doing it for that exact reason. They're like, dudes are really shy about it because they're like i don't want to look like an idiot i don't want to laugh and at me can, can i just further preface it as well that i feel like as well if you get with a new girl and you sort of build that frame from the start then maybe it's easier but if you're in a long-term relationship and it's something that you've never done yeah. for two to three years and then you just randomly start doing it <laughs> yeah, yeah then it's weird for you and maybe her completely uh first of all don't copy the crap you see in porno don't do that that is not like how to dirty talk properly read erotic novels just go onto, onto the internet and look for short erotic stories that are written by a female author and read a few of them. And then practice your sexting game with your, your girlfriend using that same kind of language. See how she responds to so that, that the, the verbiage, the way that they describe sex is very, very filled with adjectives and verbs, like in, in erotic short stories. Like the way that women, the way a female author will describe sex 
passionate sex is very, very different to the way a dude might describe it. So you, you're losing, you're using the women and women like. Start with, start with it in like, you know, you're you're at work and she's at work or whatever, sending a few sex here and there or whatever. Practice it that way, and then translate that, then transition that into whispering shit in her ear. So can you give us some examples of those terms? Because right now I'm I'm kind of picturing Kai speaking some like Shakespearean poem into into his his partner's ear and and, and not going well. So like, what are some of these female <laughs> stories that people can incorporate? Okay, let, let's just let's just make something up on top of the head. So I'm gonna, yeah, okay. I can't wait for you to get home tonight. I'm gonna make sure I bend you over that counter. And give you what I've been waiting to give you all fucking day. It's not super, it's not like, it's not super like perverted. It's more about a frame. It's more about painting a picture, painting a scenario that she can play through in her head. Same thing, like if I, and then when I'm, that's, that's like an example of a sex, right? If I'm there in person with her, it's okay, well, maybe we're making out first. And then I lean in, whisper in her ear. Like something like, I hope that pussy is ready for me right now. Because if it isn't, somebody's getting a spanking. <laughs> <laughs> Little things like that. Like it's a start, right? And look, maybe if if you like you said, if you'd never said something that like that before to your missus, like I'm I'm always in like that kind of a frame when I'm with yeah. a girl anyway. Like that's the dynamic I just have my relationships in. Is like oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna spank you. Just get ready for it. Get used to it. Do you think that would work for you, Kai? Well, it, it's, it's interesting. It's an interesting conversation because when I got with my girlfriend, I was a 17-year-old boy. I had had no father figure. I had no job, no money, no ambition. I was a completely different person when I was 17. And of course, now life is very different. Yep. Um, so yeah, I mean, I don't know. But I think- when, Do you yeah, think she'd laugh or do you think she'd be open? No, she wouldn't it? laugh at me because no. I wouldn't have that. So. Do you know the worst thing is when you're you say something or they say something, but you didn't quite catch what they said, mm. and and you go what, <laughs> and they <laughs> and repeat you it and you go again. sorry what, and it just and then the, by the third time they say it and you hear it, the mood is just fuck, you know, it's just, <laughs> just gone. Just let it go. Yeah. <laughs> just say, yeah. Sorry, what what's that? <laughs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Like you just pick up. Just if she said it in like an erotic way, cool. I'm assuming that was good. Yeah. Thumbs up. <laughs> I'm assuming that was positive. <laughs> so, <laughs> fuck it's, so maybe it's maybe it is a bit easier for me to like to kind of come across in a certain way because I'm an older gentleman, right? The women, basically, like every woman I, I'm with is younger than me, so it's, there's that dynamic already of like like daddy dom, baby girl, like dom sub stuff going on already. So it's it's it makes sense for me to talk to her in a certain way, in a way that is like authoritative. There's, these are the, I'll, I'll give you four like kind of frames you can use. Like this is like training wheels for thinking about dirty talk, right? So just to, first one is just amplify and describe what's happening already. So like let's say let's let's say we're like um, we're a missionary and I'm and I'm inside of her already. Like how does it feel every fucking stroke? Every, how does every single stroke I'm putting into you right now feel like? I want all I'm trying to do is make her pay attention to what's actually already happening. So I'm like, it's kind of like think of her mind like a car, right? And I'm stepping. I'm she was in the driver's seat before, and I'm putting her in the passenger seat, and I'm stepping in the, the driver's seat, and I'm steering the car where I want it to go. I'm, I'm directing her thoughts to whatever I want her to focus on. Like, okay, maybe maybe I'm maybe we're making out, and I put my hand in her pants and I start playing with her clip that I'm going to draw attention to what my fingers are doing. Like, do you feel, do you feel those circles? Do you feel, feel what I'm doing down there? Do you feel how much, how wet it's getting right now? Like I'm just bringing her attention to whatever's happening physically in that moment right down there. Cool. That's like describing sensations and stuff. We've got, then you can go to a like authoritative kind of like commanding language, like get on your knees, pull your panties off, pull my pants, pull my pants down, whip it out, put your, put your mouth over it. Like I'm just telling her what to do. It's commanding language. It's authoritative. Like just, it's simple. It's just telling her what to do. But that still classifies as as dirty talk. It still classifies as erotic and like being verbal. Women will get off on a guy telling her what to do like that, right? Then going a bit more extreme, you have things like 
kind of de- like you can this is the very extreme like degrading kind of humiliating kind of language this is like what this is what people think of when they hear dirty talk they think of the stuff you see in a porno where it's like really degrading calling her all these names calling her all these things you only really go down that path if she's actually into that shit you don't just whip that out the bag on a first date <laughs> Or especially if you've been with her for like eight years and she's never done this before, <laughs> you don't like you don't call her like a cum dumpster out of nowhere. Like you don't go down that way. That path. <laughs> that's something you you will build to if she if she gets off in that that regard. Like that's her kink, like a degrading kink. Some women do have that. I think a lot of the time they'll make that known as well. They'll kind of say to you, say this or yeah. say that. Yeah, they'll very they're very very often they'll be comfortable enough to tell you like I like it when you do this or that. Mm. Yeah. Earlier you mentioned you have that kind of daddy kind of um, relationship with these younger girls. We had um, Marissa Peer on the podcast recently and she said that that's actually dangerous for um, you to have that daddy dynamic. What, what's your opinion on it? Well, I, I use the word, it's daddy dom. It's like, yeah. which is like, that's like a, a kink BDSM term. Right. I'm, not, I'm not literally saying I'm their father. I'm not literally saying I'm their daddy. Yeah. It's more It's more of a like authoritative like figure. It's more yeah. of like, a um, like I'm keeping you safe mm. and I'm, I'm, respons- I'm responsible. I keep you safe. Uh, like I give you guidance, I give you assurance. Mm. That's the dynamic I talk about. I'm not sure what her definition of it. I, I think she was saying just using the terms just um, ah, right, know, psychologically, right, right. you know, messes people up. I think even yeah. outside the bed, the bedroom, when when you've got kids around and you're saying, "Oh, go and talk to daddy," yeah, 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 yeah it yeah. also and has mum, that and mummy as well. When you're saying that as as the guy, it's difficult though as well because how do you not do that? Like if you've got kids, yeah. it's like you're not going to say like Millie wouldn't say go talk to Curtis it's like no because that's dad you know like then yeah. your kids are going to start I think calling it's go you talk to your dad not daddy yeah I think like, it's, it's it worse for the guy saying go talk to mummy and then you think well you don't want to fuck your mum you know so you wouldn't want to yeah I don't think like I don't have kids so it's, pr- it's very easy mm. for me to like not have a problem with this right now I think once I have kids I'm going to stop making girls call me daddy <laughs> like instantly <laughs> it's just going to be a bit weird <laughs> so is this something you ask them to do then you say or, or is it I mean, like, they're into like, it? like they'll they'll say like what 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 should I call you and I'll say you, you call me daddy you call me sir <laughs> those are the two those are the two names I like Fair so enough. pick one <laughs> so on. bringing it back to what you just said a minute ago you said um you know, dominating and being in control. I feel like a lot well, from the OnlyFans models that I've spoke to, a lot of guys that are subscribing to OnlyFans are going on there to be, you know, insulted, yeah. um, you know, mm. be, be talked down to. Yeah. The guys that are in this position, because, you know, they must live among us, they are somewhere doing it. They live, what, they what, live among <laughs> us. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> what would your advice be for them to sort of get out of that situation? They and, don't want to get out of the situation. Do they really? have to? They don't want to. Well, I, know, I would I, say they probably have to, yeah. I would say it'd be good if they did, but they, I guarantee they don't want to get out of it. Why do you think there's so many guys that enjoy that though? And even, I think, um, what's it called? Cucks or whatever. Like They like yeah. people fucking their wives. And it's and crazy because I don't believe that there's this many of them. But then you talk to the OnlyFans girls and how much money they're making. And it's like, right, so where are these people? Well, then? because there's a stigma. As you said, they live among us, but they're not going <laughs> to scream and shout about it. I just love that phrase. Because... <laughs> <laughs> It's the way I speak. They it's are like, everywhere. Among us. <laughs> it's like invasion of the body snatchers. They're like they're among us somewhere. It's um, <laughs> they're watching this right now. <laughs> they are. Yeah. That's why I asked. Comment if you are one of them <laughs> with your with your profile picture. <laughs> yes. yes. So you said that they girls get a ton of money from guys like this, mm-hmm. and the reason they get a ton of money from guys like this is the guys like the guys that are engaging in that like the 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 submissive the guys that are playing the submissive role or want to be dominated or insulted mm. and cucked mm. typically these are guys of high net worth really? very very typically or, so i i used to date a girl back in australia who was like a she was a bdsm mistress <laughs> and all of her clients all of them were like high powered ceo guys all day they're responsible all day they're making the decisions all day they're the one with the power the authority the way they actually get release in for them sexually is to flip that on its head and for them to be the submissive that's what that's all of her clients were like that all of them Mm. and all the and all the girls that i've been with who are like high powered like like you know boss babes or whatever or they're the ceo or like like they run a business or they're like high level managerial positions all of them want to be tied up and spanked and choked and very very rough kind of stuff it's a super common thing 
It's, it's, like an, it's an escape from their norm. It sounds Completely. crazy to me that you Completely. go home and it's like, I've had a hard day at work, so can you tell me about it? I've got a small cock. Like, I just don't, <laughs> I don't get that. Like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not I've made say, loads I'm not of money saying, today. It's I'm been really say, hard. I'm not saying every guy who makes money is like that. I, that's definitely not the case. But the ones that are like that, the common denominator is that they they tend to be guys of like in positions of power and authority. Maybe not necessarily. Maybe maybe not. Maybe they're not entrepreneurs. Maybe not. But they're definitely like like high powered CEOs. Interesting. Yeah, that it's, is very it's interesting. super super common. Mm. And it goes for both sexes. Mm. So a lot of experts are saying that we're in a sex recession at the moment. Do you agree with that term? <laughs> That's a, I've never heard that before. That's funny. Um, yeah, for for younger dudes, yeah. I'd definitely say we are. And why do you think we are? Is it because of this OnlyFans thing? And yeah. you know, sex is more accessible online that they don't feel like they need to go out there and actually get it themselves? You know what? I saw a, there's an old Futurama hmm. uh, bit. I saw it came on my Twitter yesterday. And it's like <laughs> this propaganda film about like why you shouldn't date a robot. Right. So it's like this make out, make out bot and he's just sitting there making out with this bot like as a teenager, he ignores his, like, his mum comes in, hey, do you, you want to go to school? No, I'm busy making out with my robot. His dad comes in, hey, do you want to go, want to get a job? No, no, I'm busy making out with my robot. His girlfriend comes in the door. She's like, hey, do you want to go make out? He's like, oh, I don't know, Stacy. You live across the road. That's a long way to go to make out. <laughs> and he stays there and makes out with his robot. <laughs> like, and that's kind of the future we're heading into. Yeah, it's with virtual heading, reality and into the that. machines you can get on your body. Right, OnlyFans. Are like, the, real, the real thing that OnlyFans sold, guys, it's not even... OnlyFans didn't even sell guys sex, really. OnlyFans sell guys the fantasy of being able to talk to a beautiful woman with zero chance of rejection. And the funny thing is, though, they're not actually talking to them. I Correct. don't know they're if talking, guys know talk, that. But... They're talking to like a Filipino VA. Yeah. Yeah, that's what they're talking to 100% yeah. of the time. No, especially, yeah. if she's a, especially if she's a, like a, at least like in the top 5% of OnlyFans, 100% they're not talking to her. 100%. But uh, yeah, like you got you got things like OnlyFans, you got things, you got general like the social media atmosphere so we're less we're engaging less physically one-on-one -on -one like this it's all done online like yeah it's 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 we're gonna have a, like a, a baby problem mm. Mm. it's weird though isn't it because it could have quite easily gone the other way because also it's easier to find a sexual partner because you have instagram and the dating apps like you can just go out and find one yeah. for most guys anyway um so it's strange that it has gone that way where it's just i just can't be bothered anymore you know yeah. do, do you feel like you have to have like a level of confidence in real life that maybe people are lacking because like even if you get that girl on hinge or whatever it's all well and good when you're just on hinge and you know you're doing your thing but then when it's like oh i've actually got to go and meet her now and it yeah. becomes real and if people are oh they got their oculus headset on and then they're sat playing minecraft and stuff like that it's like do they have the the skills that they're they among need us to go these and... people are among us <laughs> do you get what i'm saying they are i, I get what you're saying yeah it, it's um i actually i i know a girl who's she has a, a guy friend who was exactly like that. Like he had killer like text game, shall we say? And he could get all these women to come meet up with him in Miami. Then he would just drop the ball on the first date every time. Yeah. He couldn't he yeah. couldn't close, couldn't close, couldn't close. And it's this separation between like having like an online personality or having a having like a skill set in one area, like texting, for example, versus being a genuinely attractive man. If like, yeah, you can get that girl, or maybe, maybe you might even better sleep with that girl, but you ain't gonna retain her. She ain't gonna stick around. Because you like the facade's gonna fall off if very very quickly. You're not gonna. She's gonna realize. Oh, this guy was actually a bum. Like he's got no substance to him. He's got no confidence behind. This baseless. There's nothing there. It's nothing solid. It's like ethereal. Just like a leaf being blown around in the wind. Not like a tree with deep roots. There's nothing there. So it's a problem. We've had a few um, OnlyFans stars on the podcast and they see what they're doing as, as kind of like a public service. They're giving these guys who, who wouldn't be talked to uh, by these hot women a chance to, like you said, talk to them without rejection. Do you think that's a good thing or a net um, bad thing? It's a bad thing because you've got to be cruel to be kind. Yeah. Mm. Right. So they need to feel their loneliness yes. to then actually make a to change. To do something about out. it. Yeah. Completely. To do something about it. Mm. Like I Like, first ever breakup I ever had. Probably the greatest thing that ever happened in my life. First ever heartbreak. I started hitting the gym. I started like becoming more social, making more friends, talking to more girls. Everything in my life improved after a massive heartbreak. And in fact, every time I've had a massive heartbreak, my life's gone in a massively upward trajectory. I think that's the, the that's the correct way men should handle heartbreak and handle like rejection and just having shitty things happen to them is to flip that on its head and use that energy to propel you forward. 
So yes, they need to have they need to face the reality of the situation they're in rather than living in denial and and being sedated. Yeah, because that's what that is. Like it's just sedation. Same same. With, so you can say the same thing about video games and like endless consumption of social media and and chilling on a couch watching Netflix and eating shitty food and drinking and smoking and and, and weed and it's all it's all just sedating. Yeah. men it's, it's all like it is. it's like taking drugs once you're off those drugs anymore you had the high but now you're back to reality and it's like you're relying on that quick fix in reality if you can't get girls or you're not getting that attention you're not good enough yeah. in that department work on it and then you'll have it rather than taking all guys quick... will do that though like some guys will have the heartbreak and actually go downhill rather than actually but, but, improve but themselves. i think you go down and then there's this magic point where then you there's a change and you go up. I don't know. I think you need some switch to go off in your brain to actually think, well, agency in my life, I'm going to make a change because lots of guys are reacting to things that happen to them now rather than being proactive and making the change. So what do you think is the biggest thing that can switch that in a guy's brain? I mean, for me, it's, it's always been like hitting rock bottom, kind of like what you just described. Like when you hit, when you hit rock bottom, you're like, it's the best. There's only one way to go from here. Yeah. There's nowhere else. Like this is it. I'm, I'm broke. I'm lonely or whatever, whatever the situation is. It's like, well, that's the only direction I can head. Is it possible to reach that rock bottom now, though, because of OnlyFans and porn and everything? Like they, they don't have to if they don't want to, because mm. they can sedate themselves. Yeah, that's the problem. So there's so many people just above rock bottom that are that's, never gonna. Yeah, we have to get rid of that safety blanket, otherwise they're they're just gonna be oh, cushioned. Okay, I'll just stay here. This is quite nice. I'll just watch porn in my bedroom every day. They, if we need to mm. almost find a way to get rid of it, and I know that's not kind of the reality that we're in, but well. Or instill a sense of like guilt and shame in the person, because like like for example, like bullying works, like fat shaming works, right? There's more fat people today than ever, than there's ever been because we stop telling people they're fat, mm. we stop saying that, we stop bullying people for being fat. Okay, now you can make the argument, oh that's 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 terrible, it's bad for their mental self esteem, blah blah blah. Okay, but it's having heart disease is also bad for you, mm. right? So being cool to be kind. So by like social pressure and stigma works, it, it, it really works. So you want to, if you want incent, to incentivize certain things and disincentivize other things, social stigma is a great way to go about it. Like that's, there's a reason that, you know, when like my granddad was alive, like, you know, women would get like shamed for, for stepping out of a marriage or shamed for, you know, sleeping around or whatever. Like that's, you know, now they now they flip that on its head and call it slut shaming and try to make it like a bad like make it act like it's a bad thing. It produced a positive result in society. It produced families that stuck together. Like this, people are, are too worried about offending everyone else's feelings and less worried about like the pragmatic result that's going to happen from like social stigma. Social stigma is a good thing. I want to ask you a question about what we were talking about there, hitting rock bottom after relationships. And there's a few questions. One, have you ever been in in love? Two, what happened there? And then how did that shape you as a man? Oh yeah, like I've been been in love at least three times. At least three times. Yeah. And what was was there one of those in particular that stands out to you as like a core moment where the heartbreak was so much that really allowed you to propel forwards after that? Yeah, it probably was the, the most important one for me was probably my first ever girlfriend. It was like a four year relationship. Went through like went through high school, went through college, the first couple of years of college together. And then we broke up. And I'd kind of tied my whole personality at the time. Cause that's like, you know, like it was like 16 to like 20. That's like a pretty formal, like you're trying to build and figure out who the hell you even are as a man. And I'd kind of tied my identity in with like being in that relationship. So I never really figured out who the hell I actually was. And that became abundantly clear, like right away. So I was like, well, okay, well I've got to try and a bunch of things to figure out who the hell I even am. So I just started pushing myself out of my comfort zone a lot and, and trying new experiences. Like I said, hitting the gym. I started organizing like lots of social events, just get, getting involved in every, I was at the university at the time, getting involved in any like committee or thing I could get involved in just to see like what I was, even, who I even am. So that was hands down the most important thing that had ever happened to me was that bad relationship propelled me in the correct direction. Everything went right after that. Why did that first relationship end? Uh, Let's see if I remember. Uh, she actually cheated on me with one of my friends. Really? Yeah, yeah. I didn't. I didn't even. I didn't even know that. He actually told me, hmm. but like she broke up with me. I didn't know why. And then, probably two months later, me and him were just chilling in a bar, having a beer, and he confessed it to me. 
So what mistakes do you think you made in that relationship that a lot of young men are making in their first relationships? Oh man, uh, putting on a pedestal. Like I, I made, I made every mistake. So just every to, mistake under, under the sun. Just to clarify, you blame yourself for getting cheated on. In that, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Like that was because I like she was attracted to me for a reason to start with. Like she, like she, and she was my girlfriend to start with for a reason. And then she fell out of it. Like the attraction disappeared. Okay, maybe you could say like, okay, going to university together, she saw like better options. That's probably true. But there was dudes my age who were also like crushing it with girls. So like, I just didn't, I didn't know how to be attractive. It was simple as that. I didn't know social skills. I was super like super nerdy, super antisocial, didn't know any of this shit. So like 100%, like, it's no, like you have to take responsibility. Otherwise you're powerless. Like if I sat there and said, oh, she was bad, she was evil, whatever, whatever the fuck. Like there's zero responsibility there for me, and so I'm powerless. So I, I, re and I refuse to be powerless. It's all in my control. So I'm going to find a way to put it within within my sphere of responsibility. Can you um, identify signs that someone's cheating on you uh, before it's actually happened, or are they going to cheat on you? Ooh, I Is think it's a, it's a lot easier to spot once once a woman has done it. Yeah, like if she's if she's cheated on you, like it's pr it'll be pretty obvious because women women only cheat when they have found like a better option, mm -hmm. typically. Like they've fallen out of love with a guy and they've kind of, they're have falling for a different guy. So like the, the, the passion will immediately fall off. Like she'll start and I, like there's a, a few things that seem to happen all at the same time. Like the, pa the sex life will die off, the passion will die off in the sex. The, the nagging will increase. So they're like the red flags. Like the, the, there's a few other things. Like she, don't, she, won't, uh, um, she won't leave her phone up. Right. Like with the screen showing and stuff, she'll be very protective of like opening her phone around the guy. Um, yeah, I th and I think there's a, there's there's a few preemptive like trust things you can do there, which is like okay, if she, if she has an Instagram or something, like okay, I share we share an Instagram account, or is it like we both have a login to it? If this dude sliding in that DM, yeah, okay, I need to know this so I can hit the eject button on this relationship. <laughs> I mean, if, if she's answering it, yeah, yeah, like because that's disrespectful, yeah, personally. Yeah. Like, but I by mean, the time you get to the stage where you're asking for the password, is it always? almost too late because you're almost just saying well i'm assuming that there might be something going on here no you just do it at the very beginning or she doesn't have an instagram account at all mm. right like it's because that's another that's, that's an entirely different argument there it's like well you might say oh i trust her and you know she she's she's a loyal woman she's faithful okay well i i trust the locks on my ferrari but i'm not going to park it in the ghetto so why would I put it? Why would I put my relationship in a jeopardizing position like that in the first place? So you almost go into it with a guard up, rather than going into it. I trust you until I see otherwise. You're going into it saying, "I don't. I'm going to be cautious from the beginning." Yeah, I'm, I wouldn't say. I wouldn't say I'm, I'm putting my guard up. I just say I'm being pragmatic mm. and like trying to to trying to make sure I'm trying to optimize for success, right? So it's like, okay, what are the practical things I can do? that will like kind of mitigate any bullshit because if if we got to a point where like she she wasn't sat happy with the relationship anymore or whatever i'm going to be able to tell anyway in advance so i'd rather just cut it off rather than be in a situation where i'm still entertaining a woman but she's like starting to talk to other dudes i'm like look let's just end it if it's if it's going to be it's going to end let's end it not prolong it and waste each other's time so because women women tend to like to what's called like monkey branch like they'll hold on to one relationship and they won't let mm -hmm. go of that until they've grabbed onto the next branch and they'll keep and all that kind of move mm -hmm. from one relationship to like that. Women, women are very, it's very rare that a, at least a really beautiful woman is like ever si truly single. She'll be like in a relationship as she's kind of building the next one and then move on like that. So what I want to know is where are the girls with no Instagram? Because you mentioned that ideally she'd have no Instagram at all, but so, I've never met a not single online, girl are they? that doesn't have Instagram. Well, they're not online, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, well, that's for sure, but... Where would you, you know meet what? them though? Yeah. Iron ironically, I've met uh, the last two of the last women I've, two of the last three women I've dated didn't have Instagram accounts. And I actually met them through Hinge, oddly enough. Yeah. Well, so they had Hinge accounts, but not Instagram accounts. They had the account for about a week. Right. Match oh, they they always have. You go on a date yeah. with Hinge, go, how long have you been on this? Oh, my friend made me sign up for a week ago. But they, but, but they, but they delete it. They delete it. They ain't on their phone. They delete yeah. it. So I'm like, all right. Cool. I don't care. I mean, I don't care if they were actually only on there for a week. Yeah, of course. But I'm the guy that got them. Yeah. 
All right. I got them, I'm glad I got them to delete it. So that's good enough for me. And I don't have an Instagram either. How do you think dating apps affect relationships? Because it comes down to that abundance thing again. There's there's so many options. You know, if you break up, I can have someone else by tomorrow because I can just swipe hundred times and one of them's going to date me. So what's the impact of that? Yeah, it's 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 skewed like the average, I think that end Instagram has kind of skewed the average woman's perception of like how attractive she actually is. Because, you know, there's that, there's that, people throw around this, these numbers a lot, like, you know, 20% of the dudes are like attracting like 80% of the women, which is roughly accurate when you look at stats from things like Plenty of Fish, Tinder, and, and all these kind of dating apps. And so you get, you get the the girl who would have been like, happily married to like the local mechanic, the local baker, the local plumber or whatever, happily married to that guy. Like when I was a kid, now she thinks she has a chance with like this rapper or this celebrity or this football player or whatever, just cause she's like in his DMS. So it kind of skews because look, because dudes are horny. And if a dude's like a, a celebrity, he has all the options in the world and he's gonna he's gonna put his feelers out every now and then he doesn't he doesn't have any incentive to like be like to truly be like faithful and monogamous to like one woman because he's got like the world is his oyster at that point you know i think most guys would succumb to that kind of influence when they had that much power and yeah it just it really skews things up a lot it's not a positive impact at mm. all. do you think guys should be using these dating apps and if you're saying 20 percent of guys are getting um all the girls or whatever should the 80 percent actually just go out and meet them in real life what's the better way yeah. to do it yeah if you're yeah. not you're not getting any results that you're just gonna sit there getting frustrated mm. like and if it's here's the weird thing like things like instagram and things like dating apps it's a game like anything else and it's about it's a game of marketing mm. more than anything else because you can be a shit product and women will tell you all the time like I used to live in Miami. Miami is full of dudes like this. Like their Instagram is perfect. It's immaculate. It creates this amazing lifestyle. Same with their dating profile. But like when the when the girl meets him, he's a complete bum, right? Or he's broke. Like there's it's he's not what he's selling himself to be. But she still ended up going on a date with the guy. He got the attention from her and the average the average guy who's probably like better off financially, more stable, more secure, but he doesn't know how to sell himself. It's a marketing problem. Like dating apps in an Instagram game is entirely a marketing problem. Because like dudes will say all the time, oh, women only like money. W women like dudes with money. Not really because they're not accountants. Women don't have your tax returns. They've got no clue how much money you actually make. All they have to judge that is your lifestyle and what you present to the world. And so... It's very, very easy for a dude to fake that and pretend like he has like a high level income and women will fall for that trap again and again and again, especially in big cities where it's like where they where they know there are men who actually have money living in that city. So they'll women will very, very easily fall for that marketing trap where the, the product is the, the who the guy is and what he actually is about is actually shit, but his marketing's on point. And you have the problem that most guys have is the complete reverse. They're mm -hmm. actually great guys. They're amazing. They make amazing husbands, amazing boyfriends. They, they, they work out. They, they have a great job. They'd be amazing fathers, but their marketing is just trash. So that they haven't got the top of the funnel sorted out <laughs> yeah. to, to get people down. Correct. Is yeah. it easy to market though? Because oh, about a year ago, I had an Audi S3. It's a 32 grand car, nothing too crazy. And my girlfriend's friends were asking her if I was a millionaire just because I had an Audi S3. Uh -huh. So I told you, they, they're not accountants, but I just say, yeah. they ain't got a clue. So that's all it takes. <laughs> but but how far car. should you go with your marketing though? Like obviously you're saying a lot of uh, people are good guys and they would make good partners. Should they market themselves even better than they actually are? And, and would that attract the wrong kind of girl if they did that? That's a good question. So it depends, what do you want, right? Dep you're gonna attract a certain type of girl marketing yourself a certain way. Like you can, you can market yourself as like, I don't know, I'm just gonna throw out a stereotype, like the wholesome uh, cowboy farmer from the Midwest of America. You can, you can dress nicely in a cowboy hat, pair of jeans, like straw sticking out your mouth, like, like showing off your bicep, you know, like you can market whoever you are in a good way to attract the kind of woman you want. When I, people will, will leap to the assumption I'm talking about like flashy Lambo, flashy like boat, whatever. Like that's that's one type of marketing to attract a, a one specific type of woman. But you, what's, what's your target demographic? What's your target market? 
think of it think of it like like a sales funnel right who am i actually going after am i going after like the midwestern wholesome girl am i going after like the the rural uk like small small town girl okay well how do i how do i sell to that audience to to increase my chances of attracting the kind of woman i'm actually looking for so it's a marketing problem. So if you're sitting down with a client and they wanted to make a Tinder profile, a Hinge profile, and they wanted to get the, the maximum results possible, they didn't care how they marketed themselves. They just wanted to get the most amount of girls. What would you recommend they do on their profile? I mean, look, <laughs> what what works very, very well tends to be, it depends what city you're in, to be honest. But okay, like I used to live in Miami a lot. <laughs> boats, women, for some reason, women in Miami are obsessed with boats. Right, okay. Uh, they're obsessed with like Lambos. They're obsessed with popping bottles. Uh, flashy watches like it's a bit of a, it's a complete trope but it's it it's a it's a sort of called a sexual stereotype so like i'll give you another example back in the day when i was in my mid-20s i used to hang out with this guy we used to go to pubs and stuff all the time and hit on girls and he dressed like a rock star he had like super long hair wore a leather jacket the man's never picked up a guitar in his life <laughs> but he looked like a rock star like tight leather skinny jeans right Every girl that he talked to just assumed he played in a band. He didn't correct them otherwise. Like he had, I think he had some friends who were in a band. So he's like, oh yeah, my friend plays drums. He's, he kind of mm. passed it off like that a bit. But that's an example of a sexy stereotype that it kind of shortcuts and, and it fills in gaps for a woman. She's like, she wants to like, because women will outsource to like the crowd to decide who, which guys are attractive and which guys aren't. That's why like social proof works. Because if if all of the women are paying attention to that guy, okay, well, all these women can't be wrong, right? If the majority thinks this guy's attractive, he must be attractive. That's, what, that's the whole idea of social proof. So sexy stereotypes are kind of like a hack on social proof. Yeah. It's that, like that guy in the in between us that's spiritual and he's got the guitar yeah. and everyone likes him. I think girls are really connected to that, like nature and, you know, mindset and all of that stuff. So does it matter what you actually put in your bio as well? So we talked about the pictures. Should you, you know, be a bit more spiritual in your description? <laughs> I mean, okay, it would be it would it would be incongruent for you to be like, yeah, this you're, you're the spiritual guy in your pictures, and then you're like I'm a hustler <laughs> in your bio. Yeah. It would be a bit incongruent, yeah. but it's all like the, I don't think the bio makes anywhere near as much in, as much of a difference as like like some dudes will have like a one sentence bio. Some guy, I, my bio is like full of is basically full of disqualifiers. Like I'm I'm literally saying I won't date you if you're this 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 this. But that's perfect, and I've actually noticed the same thing. I once did a very similar thing, basically putting it's like a test that they have to put themselves through. And you get so many more responses and matches because they're almost think, oh, th there's a standard here that I've got to reach. There's like a competition, which yeah. is exciting. Yeah, that that is a big, that 100% that sets, sets you apart from the average guy. Like yeah. actually having boundaries yeah. <laughs> that, but that you have to enforce, by the way. Yeah. So like one of my big ones is like, I won't date you if you're a single mother. And I get so many women who aren't single mothers DMing me saying, what's with the single mother thing? It's just an excuse for them to, to like for a, this, to message me. This is one that I found works amazing. So I'm on, on Hinge. It says, I'll fall for you if. And mine says, you're a small blonde. Now, this is great in two ways because one, you get all the small blondes. That's their in. That's their excuse to message you. So they're all messaging you. They've, they've got a, um, an incentive. But two, I get just the same amount of brunettes messaging me saying, I'm not small blonde, but whatever, is yeah, this yeah, okay? Yeah, yeah. So either way, they're either excited by it or they they see it as a test, which is- uh, Do you I stick to your boundary though? No, I say, <laughs> I say, I say, I say, do you know what? I'm, I might make a, a one-time exception for you. And that's okay. And, and, that's then, okay. and then, and then the, there's a conversation flowing, right? So it's just about creating some sort of talking point, whatever it is, yeah. that incentivizes them to message first. If you just say, I like long walks along the beach, who get, they're not going to message because there's nothing to go off there. It's not exciting either. It's not. It's not a challenge. It's not exciting. Yeah. It's not. It, it kind of makes you look a bit, a bit like a dickhead. Yeah. Not, not, not in a good way. I'm not calling you a dickhead, but like it makes you look a bit like a bit of an asshole. Yeah. Right. It's like I only date tiny blondes. What a prick. Like that's <laughs> emotion. And they want. Let me see if I can change yeah. this. Yeah. Like it's 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 fun. Like that's 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 a mistake that guys will make. They'll 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 think they'll look at a statement like that and they'll think, oh, he's a that that's being a dickhead. It's not really. You're not, it's not really because you will date like a brunette. I love brunettes. Exactly. That's right? the point. It could, it could have gone either way. Either way, it's, you know, it works. But she, the brunette won you over the personality. So now she's, she's, you've actually given her something that she can feel secure about 
right? Because you know what? You were the one that, ch- that changed me for this reason. Because what do women always do? Women will always, when you're in a relationship with a woman and she loves you, she will always ask you, like, why did you pick me? Why are you still with me? Why do you love me? Like, give me reassurance as to why you chose me. They'll constantly ask for that all the time. And you've been that you just you just created one. So yeah. would you actually date a single mother then? Could someone change no. your mind or no, not? No, no, no. Because I want kids. I want kids. Right, okay. And I'm not gonna raise some other some other guy's kids. It's not my job. Yeah, that makes sense. Dear Lord. Like <laughs> it is not my responsibility to take care of someone else's sperm. <laughs> not my problem. So look, <laughs> I'm sure there's plenty of single mothers out here who are lovely women mm. and I feel for them. Look, I wish you'd made a better choice when you got pregnant. That's Speaks, all I have to say. Speaking of that, can monogamy work in this day and age? Absolutely, yeah, it can. It can. Um, I I personally struggle with it. I'm not going to lie. I personally struggle with being being faithful, being monogamous. It's something I'm I'm trying to come around, and I'm, it's something I'm trying to proactively kind of change in my own habits. But it it absolutely can work, and I think the the reason it tends to fall apart is like we talked about before, like the sex life getting a bit dull. Mm things getting a bit too predictable, not having like a future and a plan together, like not having like a vision together. It's just, you're just going with the flow of things. Like if the man doesn't have like a clear concrete vision of like where he wants to take the family, there's nothing exciting about that. There's nothing for her to like latch onto and and like there's no ride. And where's the struggle for you personally been in that? In in trying to be monogamous? Yeah, and that if you're trying and failing, what's going wrong for you? Yeah, I just I I just give in to temptation too much. I think that's a pretty fair way of saying it. And what are you going to do to make sure that that doesn't happen? Well, I've been I I was recently on an ex, a celibacy experiment for like I it took I, I lasted like a month. And I was like I'm not going to have sex until I meet the the intention was I'm not going to have sex until I meet a woman that I actually would consider dating. And I was seeing this girl. I, I took this girl on a couple of dates. Didn't end up sleeping with her, but I ended up sleeping with a different girl because I was. <laughs> it's been a month, man. I'm like, holy crap. But yeah. So that uh, maybe isn't a, a good method of, of doing it. I, I'm, I'm going to try it again. I, okay. like I'm, I've only tried it once. Come okay. on. Yeah, give me yeah. another I'll, 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 <laughs> I'm not a quitter. I'll keep crying. I'll try another crack at it and we'll see how it go. <laughs> so for all the young men watching, do you reckon they should, um, they should find a woman now while they're building their empire or wait until they build their empire and then find their dream woman? Good question. If, you've, if, you, if you're a young guy and you come across a woman who is like, like at your age who is amazing, keep her around and make her your, like keep, make her your, like your, your, uh, your co-captain. Like mm-hmm. you're the captain of the ship. She's your first mate. If she's on board for your, your like, but paint a paint a clear picture of like the mission of he, babe. Here's what I'm gonna do. Here's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to build an empire. I'm trying to I'm trying to grow my business. I'm trying to do this that. Like, join me. What come would her responsibilities as a co-captain be though? Would they be within the business or separate? If you want to, if you want to have her in the business, that's fine. Like, I know one of my buddies. Like, he has his he has his uh, his partner. Like, like helping with like setting sales calls, like arranging meetings, like doing a little stuff like really like something that doesn't distract her away from like the, the kids too much, like just little things that she can help contribute to. Like my mother used to do all the accounting work for my dad's mechanic business, like same kind of thing. But it's, would you, would you rather like, cause you, if you, if you found a really good woman at a, as a young man, I don't think you should, you should cast that aside for, to like, just play and fool around a bit while you focus on your business. Because you, if she's on board, she can be a massive asset to you and help you grow that. And, you know, and then, and then you can start a family young and it's, and if not, you know, she can, she can be a housewife, take care of the kids. She's got it sorted while you're on your mission, you're growing, you're hustling. Because the, the, the choice that young women have to make, right. Is they have to make the choice of one, like backing a horse like that. Like, okay, I'm with a, I'm with a guy my age. We're like we're both twenty or whatever. I see potential in this man. I'm gonna stick to this guy and and help him reach his goal. If he's ambi- he should be ambitious enough for her to identify that for us for a start. That's why I think it's important for guys to have ambition and have a goal, right? She's got to choose between that or a young pretty woman is like, or do I go for like the thirty year old dude who's already made it? That's the choice young women really have to make. Um, and it's it's a bit it's a tough one because you know there's there's like security in the older dude who's already made it. But if the younger girl like hitches her her ride to like the the winner, well, okay, she's already she's had a family at a young age, like they're they're growing together. 
the kids are like when when they're when he's successful and he's made it the kids are like 10 he's still 30 like he's still active he's able to have a much more fulfilling family life than if he's a bit older how do you tell the difference between maybe lust and love like with the perfect girl is she actually the perfect girl what are her attributes it's a weird question for me to answer because for me it's like does she annoy me like <laughs> that's a weird way to answer that question right but I, uh, my, my, my measure of like, do I truly love a woman is d like, does this woman just give me peace? Mm -hmm. Cause it's very, it's very easy for people to annoy me, not just women, in, but people annoy me in general. I'm a very, I'm actually quite an antisocial person. <laughs> it might not seem like that, but so my, my measure of like, will I end up falling in love with a girl is basically, do I find her irritating in some way? And that's also kind of my my metric for like getting into a relationship with a girl. If she doesn't, if I don't, if she doesn't irritate me and she just she just brings peace, like it's just this. Oh, yep, yep. Okay, I want you around me all the time. That's that's my measure of love these days. Because I don't because because love is this. It's a it's you know people can conflate it with a bunch of different things. People conflate love with like codependency. They conflate it with neediness. Like they can they conflate love with a lack of options. I know I did that as a young man, you know, like, oh, I love her. No, it's, she was really just the only option you had at the time in like a 3,000 person farming town. So like you loved her. Like guys will cope, I think. I know so many people like this. Like as soon as they get a sniff, they're just straight in it. I love you. It's like, come on, mate. You've known her two weeks. Yeah. It's all the time. It's so common. But bringing it back to that story that you just told about meeting a girl before you build your empire, she sees the potential in you and then running with it. Do you think that's where like the place for monogamy comes in? Because if you had met the one when you was a lot younger, before you had any money, how can she nurture you and, you know, do everything for you at home and help you become the man that you want to be? You then strike it big and become successful. And then now I'm going to go and fuck whoever I want. <laughs> <laughs> when you're the one that helped me get there, yeah, I think I think it's very disrespectful to her. Um, also, to be to be fair, like you women have to kind of understand the nature of, of of men and the nature of male sexuality, and it's it doesn't mean he doesn't. If 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 a guy got in that situation, okay, like he's he's striking it big, and now he's got a few options on the table. I know a guy who's been married for quite a long time. He's got kids. He has been unfaithful to his partner for quite a number of years hmm. she has no idea nothing about their relationship has changed like he is still an amazing husband still an amazing father not neglectful at all just occasionally now and then he steps out she does not know it does not affect her, her any any way shape or form but if he if he wasn't doing that i know in this particular circumstance if he wasn't doing that he would start to build resentment towards his wife and like it would actually damage their relationship so in some ways it actually it is actually good for a woman to be kind of blissfully ignorant of that if the guy is just like a guy like me it's really really hard for us to like just stay with one woman for such a long time without occasionally stepping out i'm not saying it's a good thing i'm not saying it's morally right i'm just i'm just trying to be pragmatic and explain what how does it that is. guilt weigh on him though does he feel that no actually he, he doesn't he doesn't feel that from my conversations with him he doesn't feel any guilt around it he would feel guilty if he if he ever made her his wife feel embarrassed right. i think that's, he would. i think that's the then biggest problem isn't it the embarrassment of everybody knowing that, that exactly your man did exactly this. and that's and that's that he doesn't do it like in their kind of area mm. and it's in my in my view that's actually quite respectful like because mm. that, that's that's the problem like women the the real reason that women don't like have a problem with being cheated on is it's less to do with the sex because women most women will understand that sex is not necessarily an emotional thing for mo for men it can be a very it's just a sexual thing it's not intimately connected with emotions and love like women have it it's the embarrassment and like the the lack of social standing she gets she women every time a woman will talk about this she she's like uh, she will say i'm afraid that other women are laughing at me behind my back that's what goes through a woman's head when she thinks about being cheated on or whatever and you have to, i think women have to understand that, that that's really not the case like if you're if you're the wife who's who's had the kids you won baby you've got you won the prize like cuz you're going to have all these memories with 
your husband and the kids later on down the line that all these side women will never get. They're never getting any of that. But is, it, is the relationship all a bit of a lie? Because this is why I asked the monogamy question earlier on, because biologically, um, from what you're saying anyway, and I'm sure there's studies to back it up, men need to see other women. And even you've said in your friend's scenario, if he wasn't, his relationship wouldn't work. So therefore, it is the argument actually, well, monogamy can't work. Men need to be seeing other people for the, their relationship to actually be healthy. I in think, some cases. Do you know, I think, I, I, think I, I, I would say, I would specify in some cases. There's, yeah. so, there's some guys that I know which just would not work being one of them. And there's other guys I know who are perfectly happy with it. Mm. I think maybe, maybe it's a sex drive thing. It might, that might play a big, big role in it. But uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like that's the pres- that is the prescription for like every dude because it really isn't. But it was a lot more common in like, let's say my dad, the baby boomer generation, that what that what I just described there with my buddy, that kind of scenario was way more common in the baby boom generation than people think. They were just really good at hiding it and not talking about it and not embarrassing their wife. I guess it was easier to hide it because that girl doesn't have Instagram who's going to DM that girl and say, hey, girly, yeah. <laughs> hate to be the one to break it to you or whatever. Yeah. It can kind of just happen behind closed doors. Very much so. I do believe in what you're saying to a certain extent as well, because to sort of give my feedback on what you were saying is like, I believe in monogamy, but then for what I know, my great grandma and granddad were monogamous for many, many years. But the whole time that I've been alive, they have slept in different beds. So mm. it's like, why does that happen? Yeah, what's you know? going on, what's going like on there? Like there is something that's gone on there. And, you know, that, that's pretty much for, for as long as I can remember anyway. They had separate rooms. And when I was a kid and we'd ask about it, it was like, oh, you know, granddad snores and, and it stops me from sleeping, you know, all of that bollocks. But like, mm. that's the same as my nan and granddad, actually. Mm. Is it? Yeah. Maybe it is the snoring. Who knows? Or maybe it's something Suspicious. else. Suspicious. <laughs> maybe granddad needs <laughs> yeah, to go out there and get some. Kind of thing. Oh, my, my dad snored his head off and my mum slept, slept in the same bed with him their whole life. So I, I'm suspicious. <laughs> so, so so was your dad might have, might have to cut that out <laughs> no, <laughs> I think my nan wants to hear that sorry. she probably doesn't watch the podcast anyway. All right, cut your bit out yeah. leave mine in um, what was I going to say um, yeah I want to bring it back to what you were saying about social proof and you said about a guy that um, you know goes out dressed as a rock star and stuff like that does that is that taking it too far to the point where it becomes sad? Because like for me personally, I see my Instagram as almost like a, a portfolio that yeah. I'm building up yeah. of, you know, connections that could help me in both business and in, in with girls if that ever happened, which hopefully it doesn't, but let's just say it did. Um <laughs> long term relationship. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm eight years deep now, so yeah. Um where was I going with this? Yeah, does does it get to a point where it becomes sort of like sad though? Because let's just say like Curtis now was single, or let's say Tom, who is single, was pretending to be someone that he's not just to get girls. Yeah. I, I personally, as his friend, would say, bro, you're so sad. Yeah, like, why I, can't I, you I'm, just be you? I would not advocate pretending. Like, I use that my my old buddy as an example. Yeah, and that, was, that was just being dickheads in our 20s. Because I think that girls should like you because you're the guy and you shouldn't yeah. have to pretend to be yeah. the guy should, to get you should, girls. You should create that. Yeah. You should be that guy. Yeah, but like, become that guy. Yeah, should, yeah, I'm not, yeah. I'm, I'm glad you asked that question because it was good clarification. Like, you shouldn't pretend to be a dude that you're actually not. Yeah. Like, that was an, yeah, it was an example of like how powerful like social stereotyping and sexual yeah. stereotyping is. But you should aim to be the real deal. You should aim to be the superhero. You should aim to be the, like the action hero. Like that's, you should be that guy. If that's what you want to portray, if that's the, that's the marketing you want to choose, like if that's what you want to aspire to, then be it. And the, and the way, the way I it. see it is that like if you are that guy and you want to go out and, you know, constantly chase girls and things like that, that's cool, whatever. But when people are forcing it and pretending to be something that they're not, I mean, yeah. I just personally find that really sad and I wouldn't like one of my friends doing that because I just think you're a loser. And you should write, and you should call him out on it. Yeah. Rightfully so. Yeah, so I just wanted to clarify that. No, no, it was on my so mind. So I'm as, very glad you asked that. So as some um, parting advice for the people watching, what would you like them to take from this podcast? The, the main thing. <sighs> they are among us. <laughs> I <sake>. love it. <laughs> awesome. They are everywhere. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming on the show. It's Pleasure. Been very good. Uh, where can people find you? YouTube's the easiest place. Just type in Sterling Cooper. You'll find me. I'm the first thing that comes up. You'll find all my stuff there. Uh, if you want to go for a deeper dive, go to sterlingcooper.com. And that's where I list. I have all my my uh, my books, my my video courses, uh, my my email newsletters on there. You can get up, sign up to that and uh, yeah, get just a daily dose of my brain in your email inbox. If you've enjoyed, make sure to smash that thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm and we will see you next Wednesday with a brand new podcast. See you later.